Thanks for joining me. My name is Mark, or if you're new to me and new to watching my channel, I go by the pen name Mark Allard Will, both for writing for comics and for virtual cycling events and commentary on said virtual cycling events. Today we're returning to a comic book focused video for the first time in a little while. So what are we looking at today? We're looking at Humboldt, the small city in Saskatchewan right here in Canada. It's home away from home for me. It's a city of several thousand people, so quite small, and most other places in the world would consider this a town. But it's a beautiful place, and I do love it so. And we're looking at the Humboldt Summer Sizzler Comic Con, which is part of the Summer Sizzler festivities that run throughout either late June or early July, depending on how the weeks and days fall on any given year and it's free to attend and it's also free for exhibitors to exhibit. So we're going to look at this event because I feel it's quite special. It's a Comic Con that is run in a small town and was built with a build it and they shall come mentality by Jeff Burton who is an avid comic fan who for years stood alone as an ardent supporter of both comics and Canadian comics in particular in Humboldt, but has now built this wonderful, thriving community of geekdom around him in the aforementioned Humboldt. So without any further ado, what I'm going to do this time, rather than looking at the exhibitors, is we're going to do something special. We're going to hand over to Jeff and he's going to introduce the show to you. My name is Jeff Burton. Uh, I am a creator, comic book creator here in Humboldt, and I am the organizer for the Humboldt uh, Summer Sizzler Comic Con. Fantastic. And we're here in the hall in the calm before the storm, and this is the largest Humboldt Summer Sizzler Comic Con. But before we touch on that, I was wondering if we could, if you could kind of guide us through how your journey with the Humboldt Summer Sizzler Comic Con began. For sure. Well, it, it started a, a number of years ago. We used to run a kids summer fun program here where it was a kids camp during the summer and when I was in charge of that one of the ideas I had was hey what if I could you know introduce these kids to what like a little bit of a comic convention felt like. Um, I had been getting into them myself and we just kind of started by inviting some artists that I knew and met uh, more locally and some that had ties to Humboldt like Elaine and um, we got some sponsors, we got free comics for the kids and stuff, and it just kind of started snowballing out of there so much so that my boss with the kids camp was like, well this isn't really something that the kids camp is for, what if we move this out and put it into the Summer Sizzler, which was the annual fair here in Humboldt. Um, so we took a, a chance that first year, which was in 2016, and jumped it out into the, the Summer Sizzler, and um, it's been growing ever since. It's been fantastic. Fantastic. And there's been some really great anecdotes that have come out of your tenure with Summer Sizzler Comic Con. And I'm wondering if you could tell us some of those, such as like the National or the uh, Municipal Comics Day and things like that. Yeah, we've had um, lots of support from the city as a whole, um, with this, uh, providing the space and the tables and everything every year. And um, when it works out timing-wise and I can get my... Uh, my stuff connected with the mayor down at City Hall, we usually get a proclamation made for the week of the Comic-Con to have it be proclaimed as um, the City of Humboldt recognizes it as National uh, Canadian Independent Comics Week here in Humboldt, um, which is uh, a great thing and we're, we're working to get back to it. Actually, the mayor even messaged me this year and was like, hey, don't forget, let's try and get this organized. So unfortunately, timing-wise, we didn't get it put together, but uh, just the fact that you know City Hall is that supportive, and I mean, uh, this current mayor is not the mayor who was in office when we started this, but the fact that the new mayor wants to still be a part of it and still finds the value in it is uh, really encouraging and makes it worth all the effort to put together. Fantastic. And how did that journey look like, going from being independent from the city to working with the city? Um, it was really pretty seamless. Um, since it was technically part of a city program already, they just wanted to move it out into a bigger scale. Uh, but they uh, have been really good in saying, you know how to do this, so if we give you the support, can you make this happen? Um, and all I have to do is come to them and say, you know, I'd like to do this, I'd like to do that, or I'd like to do this. Is this possible? And I mean, for the most part, they're like, this is your program. 
you're running the show, you can, however you want to put this together, let's go for it. Uh, we've had a couple uh, venue changes. Um, they moved us out of the curling rink down to the arena floor for a couple of years. Uh, or, well, actually, we started down on the arena floor, and then we moved back up into the curling rink here into this space, which works really well, I find, for what we're doing. Uh, although, if we get any bigger, we might have to reevaluate that kind of look um, in future years. Fantastic. And coming back to this being the largest year you've done so far, how does it feel to go from having been that small tent down in Main Street <laughs> where there was like four creators to be in, was it 38 that you have this year? Uh, this year we have 47, 46. We had one cancellation today. Oh wow. Uh, they uh, have been struck down with an illness, so unfortunately they're not going to be able to join us this weekend. But uh, yeah, we have uh, 46 uh, booths signed up for this year. so. Uh, by far and away the largest, which is like, probably looking at about 10 more than what we've had in previous years. So. And, and how does that journey of growth feel? Um, going from it feels fantastic that there's that much interest, um, that many people that are willing to, especially this year, come out on Canada Day um, and be a part of this. Um, it's, it feels really good that they find the value in it, that they've heard word from other people that have been here promote, and the uh, people that have been here in previous years are promoting the show to people that they know when they're at other shows and stuff like that. Uh, that feels really good to know that you know they believe in it enough to, to promote it themselves too. I've seen a journey where people like Braden Hafferchuk yeah. has been inspired to move from Winnipeg to Saskatoon because of coming to this show in I believe 2017? I think so yeah. How does it feel to know anecdotes like that? Um, that's pretty incredible. I mean, it shows it shows why my belief in doing this um, works. Because I know that we have a very strong and passionate community, um, fellow creators and stuff like that. And um, I don't ever see doing this show as oh, like, you know, this is going to be a slog work week or a work, a work day where I'm going to have to be, you know, pitching and stuff like that. Um, I always say that. The, the Sizzler Con is I'm hanging out in a really big garage with a bunch of my friends and we're selling comics and geeky stuff and we just get to, to relax and it's, it's a very welcoming atmosphere. Um, we've never encountered where we've had people that didn't want to be here or didn't have fun being here and stuff like that at their tables which then spreads to the people that are coming in and it just, it's infectious, it just spreads out from there. Across this journey, because it's in such a, a smaller uh, centre in Saskatchewan and there's already the big well-established comic shows in Saskatoon and Regina, how, did you encounter any resistance on that journey from the beginning to today? Um, you know, I was kind of expecting that I might or anticipating that I might um, and especially because uh, in Humboldt when I started doing this there wasn't a real heavy outward presence of this kind of stuff in the community. Um, if there was people here that were into it, it was kind of like in, in whispers over here and whispers over there kind of thing. Um, but I think through this, people are starting to, to be a little bit more um, outwardly comfortable in, in that expression and stuff like that. And I think in general that we're seeing that as, as um, society around the whole geek and comic culture has changed and is more accepting. Um, but I like I like the fact that maybe this little show that I started stringing together um, showed people here that yeah, we can be part of that bigger scene of being open and expressive about our passions when it comes to this. Sure. And what message would you have for anybody else in a small centre, whether that's in Saskatoon, in Saskatchewan, or in Tajikistan? Um, what would your message be to building that community from nothing? Um, to start from nothing is just, you know, embrace your passion. If this is, if this kind of stuff is your passion, don't, um, don't tuck that away. Be open and honest about that, and you'll find other people that are into it. Um, uh, expressing your passion and living your passion um, attracts other people to you that share similar passions and stuff like that. And it becomes really easy to build a community like this when you're just very open. Like my classroom at school doesn't look like a normal teacher's classroom. I have, you know, I have teaching materials on the walls, but then over top of that I have independent comic book artwork and everything gracing my my classroom and my kids know that this is who I am. This is part of who I am. The wall behind where my teacher's desk is is 
photo ops from all the conventions that I go to and stuff like that, like people that I've met and things like that. So they get the they get this sense that, you know, this is who Mr. Burton is and you know what, that's really cool and it's okay for me to express that side of me even if maybe it's not, you know, they're the only one in the class that likes that or something like that. Um, I've recently got into a couple animes and some of my students are really into them so when they found out that I started watching them, well, all of a sudden they just went from being really quiet about liking it to being like, yeah, you know, I, what did you think of this newest episode, this one and that and stuff and they just really blossom. So if you're in a community where you don't have that opportunity to, that somebody else is doing that, but you want to do that, do it because other people that are into it will find you and you'll find your community and grow it from there. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, no and that's all the questions I've got for you today. Perfect. Well, thanks for doing it. All right. Well, now you've got to see something more about the Humboldt Summer Sizzler Comic Con and learn a bit about the show and maybe a little bit about the small city of Humboldt. I really appreciate you watching and I will be back soon. I'm not sure what the next video will be, but whatever that adventure is, I really hope to have you there with me. So, thanks again for watching. This has been a really great privilege to bring this to you, but it's also quite tough to shoot these videos. When Elaine and I were out in Humboldt, it was uh, a lot of running around to get the shots of the landmarks. And when you're at the show, at the Humboldt Summer Sizzler Comic Con, it's a lot of running from my table to other parts of the convention hall to catch shots of the other exhibitors and to catch shots of their work in the hall and all of that kind of thing. So if you really enjoyed this video, something you could do for me if you wish to and if you have the money is there is a link in the description of this video where you can donate to my Kofi to support my work, to support my efforts which are done entirely for free for stuff like this which is just videos I'm doing for fun to entertain you but there's a lot of big uh, tech and big equipment and big effort that goes into it so it's it, it takes something so if you wish to give something back I'd really appreciate it if you wish to give something but get something as well, there's also a link to my Kofi store where you can purchase one of my books which will be signed by myself and can be shipped to your door anywhere in the world. And if you do either of those things, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. If you don't and you just enjoy the video and give the like and all of that stuff, well thank you for enjoying the video, I appreciate it all the same. Anyway, I'm going to get back to wrapping up this video, stop waffling, and say thank you once again. 